Now, as the number of cases continue to rise of rape in Nigeria, the office of the senior special assistant to Governor Willy Obiano on broadcast media, Ifi Aronu, organized a one-day sensitization and road work against rape in Oka. The exercise was in collaboration with Anambra Broadcasting Service, Association Against Child Abuse and Gender-Based Violence, National Women Council of Nigeria, Anambra State Branch, and many other groups. In her speech, the organizer of the program and journalist, Ifi Aron Okafo, who is also the Senior Special Assistant to the Governor, uh, Willie Obiano on broadcast media said that she wanted to ensure the message gets to the rural areas and urged all to join hands to see an end to rape and other forms of sexual molestation. Especially after the lockdown, we've seen that um, cases of rape have risen, increased dramatically, and people are asking questions. And then, of course, we know that all of these things, uh, they are not isolated. They are close to us, they are in our homes, they are in our neighborhoods. So somebody had to, you know, put this together. Somebody has got to put it together in different localities. So I'm doing this for us to, to send a wrong, uh, a, for us to send a right signal to the rest of Nigeria that action should be taken at the local levels. We didn't go to Abuja, we are doing this right in Oka to say that we know that these things are happening and that we don't want rape anymore. That people should stop raping other people, whether you be man. Man, stop raping your fellow man. Stop raping women. Joining us now to talk more on this is Ifi Aronio Kafo herself, the senior special assistant to Governor Willy Obiano on broadcast media. Thank you very much, Ifi. It's been a minute. How are you? Thank you so much, Felicity, for having me this morning. I'm good. Good to know. So what's happening in Anambra where you are? What motivated you to take on this protest and to what end? Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that um, Anambra State is part of Nigeria, so we can't say that something different is happening in Anambra. The only difference is that Anambra State government at this time is very transparent in terms of data. You know, we do a lot of in-house research. It's more like know thyself. The government is fought right. The government comes forward to say this is what is happening. And lately, you know, when we saw that rape cases were springing up from other parts of the country, we decided to start campaigns. The Anambra Broadcasting Service, the Ministry of Information and Public Enlightenment, Ministry of Women Affairs, everybody came together and we put out messages out there to let our people know that rape there's been an upsurge in rape cases and for us to be on our guard. And it paid off because lots of people came forward to report. And that is why we have that report that says over 80 cases. And in the past week, we've had more people coming forward. Guess what? These are not cases that just happened. This might be rape cases from over the years that were unreported. And people are now energized. They feel that the government will listen, that something can finally be done. And that is what is happening in Anambra at this time, people are coming forward. What kind of intervention, what are the right intervention in your um, uh, thinking is needed now to help to begin to address this dysfunctionality? Thank you. Uh, first, we know that in recent times, you know, in Anambra State, the Rolex Center, Ntasi, that is Ntasiobi, to comfort uh, people who've been through sexual abuse, sexual molestation, was set up by the Anambra State government. And that's a first. That means that those who have such cases, they, they, they will not be stigmatized because they won't have to go to open courts, you know, to get redressed. So the center is in Ihiala. So anyone who has such cases can now go with confidence knowing that their identities are protected. That is why we have more cases being reported in Anambra. And that's what the government is doing, to send a, wrong, a, a right signal, to send a, a very bold statement to anyone who's raping people out there any, at all quarters in Anambra State. Well, to if, know if, that you're, if you're protecting the identity of those uh, um, who are victims, are you also protecting the identity of the rapist? What happens to the name and shame mantra that has been promoted to encourage these men to refrain from taking these kind of actions? 
Yes, we are protecting the identity of victims because we know that stigma comes with it. But in due course, this center is um, just a few weeks old. Yeah, so in due course, when uh, rape victims, of course, you know, uh, the legal process has got to take its course before you can pronounce someone a rapist. And when that is done, definitely people will have to know who the rapists are. They will be shamed in public. Their names will actually be in the open domain so that other people will not have to go through the same process, even if in the end, you know, um, they are still part of the society. That's, that's it, because we know threatening of legislation is the most important thing at this point. The law says life imprisonment, but we've seen that that hasn't really been enforced. So in the meantime, yes, we are doing all that we can as government to ensure that rape victims come forward. And then we take it off from there. All and right, Evie. Law, so we're calling on the legislature to also speed up the process of giving us uh, you know, stronger laws, stiffer penalty. That is what I said uh, during the walk against um, rape. I said we need stiffer penalties. Like, for me, life imprisonment is not good enough. All right, Evie, enough. I'm afraid that's the much time will allow us now. Thank you very much for your thoughts and your insight.